Hi, this is Mike Hendrickson from Strata Hadoop World in San Jose. I'm here with Eric Frinkiel. Eric, how you doing? Good, Mike. How are you doing? Good. So you're the CEO and founder of MemSQL? I am. Yes. You are. Uh, I all started about four years ago, uh, and we attended you know, one of the first Stratas where uh, we were at the Startup Showcase. Alistair mentioned that on stage uh, yesterday. So it's been a fast, quick journey, hasn't it? It's been a, a great journey. I mean, uh, in four years' time, we've been able to um, you know, launch the product in uh, 2013. Uh, and uh, we're just hitting our two-year anniversary next month on the market. So we're very excited about what's going on. So there, there are uh, mem in-memory solutions around everywhere yeah. at this event. So can you give us kind of the state of the industry of, of in-memory? Um, yeah. yeah. So I, I would say at a high level, um, uh, in-memory is actually getting very interesting uh, because what's going on with Spark. So the entire Hadoop ecosystem has, for the most part, been based on HDFS batch processing on a disk environment. What we're starting to see is Spark is giving uh, a lot of customers an ability to work with in-memory uh, processing, leveraging Spark. Uh, and that's very exciting because now uh, more customers, more organizations can go real time. So what does Spark bring to like MemSQL, for sure. instance? What, I mean, why, why, why do the two work well together? So uh, at a high level, Spark is an uh, in-memory ex uh, execution engine. It's for processing data and sending it elsewhere. Um, so Spark relies on other systems like MemSQL to provide durability, transactionality, and consistency. Uh, and what makes it very interesting is that uh, MemSQL as a database is great for in-database SQL analytics. But there are certain types of analytics that you can't express in SQL. In which case, having a really rich, robust exploration engine like Spark gives yeah. analysts and data scientists an ability to write custom code that can then be pipelined back into a operational system. So are there any particular industries that would be more um, uh, suited for that sort of processing where you have Spark and MemSQL working together? Yes. Are there certain industries that well, let's, seem natural for that? Or? Well, let's just talk on sort of like how Spark can actually affect the ecosystem and specific like industries. Um, it's, at a high level, any data-driven industry needs Spark. It's about going real time and shifting away from the batch process. But in particular, ad technology uh, uh, is driven on impressions and clicks. Financial services is driven on sort of order data, tick data. Um, E-commerce is uh, driven on sort of being able to anticipate what users and customers are yeah. going to want. Yeah. Um, and those are the immediate use cases. But you can think of it that um, what I mentioned last last yesterday. Um, we have more sensors, more devices. So these Internet of Things use cases are very complementary to a streaming context. So using Spark to transform the data and then ingest it into a database is very, very critical because that database can now expose that real-time data to analysts and data scientists. So the Internet of Things is a, a really good opportunity ahead mm -hmm. of us. How about health and, and medical? Is that a, an area where sensors working with uh, you know fast data and figuring out diagnosing what could be wrong with someone? So um, we're very early on in sort of how healthcare will intersect with IoT. I mean, we're wearing more devices. Uh, a, a wristwatch exactly. can track a heartbeat. Yeah. Um, but uh, in terms of getting that data sort of quickly processed, um, it's not a, at a robust sort of phase for that particular industry. We do anticipate, of course, that uh, rapid access to you know uh, basic monitoring. I see you actually wearing uh, a Fitbit? Yes. Yes. I mean, that's a great example. Um, so companies that are collecting that data are now able to start le leveraging that device to actually make a recommendation, perhaps, about uh, more you know, exercise or doing something sitting else. Up or, sitting up. Yeah, There's yeah. a lot of different those, use cases. Yeah, yeah. Um, but it's a general purpose IoT use case. Uh, and I think healthcare is ripe for disruption in terms of getting down to the minute uh, analytics. Excellent. So where, where do you see uh, the in-memory industry going, let's say, 12 months from now? A year out. I mean, I think well, we're, we're very early with Spark. Uh, and MemSQL has been working with Spark uh, for a few months now. Um, we uh, are happy to be uh, sharing real-world um, uh, use cases. Pinterest is using it to process pins going into their website. Um, so uh, at present, we're starting to see a lot of early, early adoption. Uh, and I think in 12 years, uh, 12 months, hence, a year from now, we'll see uh, more companies starting to really leverage uh, Spark as a way to replace MapReduce um, and other sort of uh, technologies leveraging sort of uh, in memory to basically get real-time analytics. Um, so I think that's where the next phase of big data is. It's, we've solved the sort of volume aspect. 
going real time is the next phase. Okay, and so uh, industries that are going to go there first, um, what do you what do you what do you think is going there? So as an in memory you know technology, we're seeing a lot of customers adopt us across many verticals, but the, some of the biggest are uh, financial services. So banks are leveraging yep. us for fraud detection. Yep. Um, of course, ad technology, as I mentioned earlier, clicks, uh, ticks, you know, impressions count. Um, and then online business that needs to un uh, ensure that their revenue per minute metric does not drop because of some sort of anomaly in their infrastructure. Uh, we have seen adoption with uh, oil and gas customers as they monitor their own sort of uh, rigs. Production. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And uh, it's something where, again, it's about getting access to that data quickly uh, and being able to make a recommendation, a decision, or respond to something new that's happening. Excellent. So uh, put on your 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 um, your crystal ball, or, or let's have a crystal ball here in the middle of the table. Done. Um, where is MemSQL going to be mm -hmm. in three years from now? Because you, you know you mentioned your journey sure. four years ago. Right. Where are you going to be in three years? That's a great question. Um, I think in three years' time, I mean, we are very much interested in sort of extending what SQL can do. So uh, we've been able to build a robust distributed uh, SQL engine. So you can run distributed joins. Um, it's very, very fast. Um, you know, some of our customers are consuming hundreds of thousands of events per second into the system on just commodity hardware. So we've laid a good foundation. Um, we're interested in seeing, you know, how will SQL evolve? Uh, because at the end of the day, SQL is that foundation, but you know we've added JSON, for example, as a native data type in 2013 that gives our customers an ability to work with semi-structured data. Uh, and we're very interested in Spark because it gives customers an ability to work with non-type, yeah. non-SQL type of, uh, of analytics, which is decidedly not like NoSQL, it's just non-SQL expressible. Uh, and again, Pinterest has been very excited to kind of work with us to leverage both a SQL system that can ingest data from Spark streaming, and then Spark itself to run custom uh, analytics uh, that they need to process. Excellent. So three years out, I would say something around extensibility. Okay. In a nutshell. Well, we look forward to seeing you in those three Pleasure. years. Awesome. Thanks, Eric. Thanks, Mike.